man has hunted since the beginning of time. What began with crude weapons and animal images scrawled on cave walls has developed into a multi-million dollar industry. From the Tilton Hiltons to the mansions in the marsh, we hunt and we cook. Everything from rabbits and raccoons to deer and ducks while learning about the passion of sportsmen through the ages. Man's love affair with hunting is really not about the kill, but how to prepare a sumptuous wild game banquet after the hunt. Now get that camouflage apron and join me, Chef John Foles, for another Taste of Louisiana. Funding for After the Hunt with Chef John Foles is brought to you by the Baton Rouge Area Convention and Visitors Bureau. Day is dawning on the Mississippi River and the sun is shining on Baton Rouge. Attractions, shopping, food, and southern hospitality you know and love. Go BR and go brighter. And the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting. Our mission is to tell Louisiana's story to the world. And by the Louisiana Department of Culture, Recreation, and Tourism. Vacation planning guides are available at louisianatravel.com. You wait all year for your vacation. Don't sleep through it. to all of you for joining us in Sportsman's Paradise for yet another edition of A Taste of Louisiana. I'm so delighted to have all of you here with us in the studio audience as well as all of those great viewers back home. I'd like to introduce uh, the kitchen, uh, you, you know, the kitchen band I'm going to call over here, Judy Whitney Davis. My God, you're great, huh? <laughs> <laughs> But it's so great to always have the musicians here in the kitchen, but, that, but um, I'll tell you, you're at the top. If you're not doing anything tomorrow, I want to talk to you. Okay. As, I, as many of you Louisianians know, I'm a native son of this great state. I lived in the swamplands and marshes of Louisiana. I grew up, as many of you did, eating everything in the world that flew, that crawled, yes. that slithered. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. We're going to eat some today. Uh, that, that, uh, that swam. And, you know, most of our outings weren't taken by car, but by boat uh, through the canals that connected the swamps and rivers of Louisiana. That was our interstate highway, so to speak. At one time, boats were critical for Louisiana families. For many, it was their only means of transportation to church, to the grocery store, if they had one in the area, uh, trapping, hunting, or back to civilization. I want you all to take a look at some of the boats that were and are critical today to Louisiana life. Louisiana is a state a thousand times blessed by creeks, ponds, streams, lakes, rivers, and bayous. Southern Louisiana contains 40 to 45 percent of the nation's wetlands. Needless to say, boats are an integral part of the Louisiana outdoor experience. Even before the European settlers came, the Indians had them. They made dugouts out of cypress trees by burning them. From then on, the Americans took it and, and uh, they settled the bayou with boats. Founded in 1979, the Center for Traditional Louisiana Boat Building is located on the grounds of Nichols State University in Thibodeau, Louisiana. The center conducts research on wooden boat building throughout South Louisiana and houses quite a collection. The classic Louisiana boat design is the dugout pirogue. Used in French Louisiana, it's modeled after dugouts used by native tribes all over the world. Hollowed out from a single tree trunk cut in half and then lengthwise, the pirogue is a naturally buoyant and versatile vessel. It can be paddled or poled through shallow or deep water and provides an almost silent approach to hunting, trapping, and fishing. Unique to Louisiana is the Lafitte Skiff, presumably developed in the small fishing town of Lafitte near the Gulf of Mexico. The Lafitte Skiff was basically a flat-bottom boat like that that could move through the bays faster 
they would uh, they go into the bays with that and, and, and catch the shrimp and load them and bring them in fast to the docks. Over time, the hull evolved into a semi-V design. Lafitte skiffs range in size from 14 to 50 feet long. The Creole rowing skiff is the smallest and lightest of the skiff models. It combines the sharp bow of the pirog with the stable stern of the flat bottom boat. They used them to haul their cattle, to haul uh, uh, their passengers, the kids, uh, as a, to carry a coffin if they had to go to a burial plot. A cross piece and oar extension called a jug just aft of the middle of the boat allows this skiff to be rowed in a standing position, providing a better view of what lies ahead. The Putt-Putt is an old time flat bottom boat geared with a two cycle engine. These boats were used mainly by the Cajuns to navigate swamps and bayous before the advent of the outboard motor. And it went put, put, put. And it was a very fast, not a very, it was a faster boat than rowing a boat. Perfected by the Nadler Foundry in Plaquemine, Louisiana, each engine was said to have a distinct sound or putt-putt so neighbors knew exactly who was coming long before the boat came into view. Beginning in the 1930s, when Louisianians discovered offshore shrimping as a viable means of income, large round bottom boats began to dot the bayous and bays of South Louisiana. The boats are instantly recognizable by their long trawling arms draped with shrimp nets. Shrimp trawlers range in size from 50 to 70 feet and can handle the roughest of seas. The traditional oyster luggers provide plenty of room on deck for working the oyster tongs or hand rakes once used by oystermen. There was also plenty of room to store the harvest. Today, luggers operate with dredges. In short, boats allow you to access many of the prime hunting spots of Louisiana. There are so many designs of boats and motors out there, it's difficult to comprehend. Shallow water boats, flat bottom boats, inboard motors, outboard motors, consoles, cabins. Ah, isn't it nice to have so many options? That, ah, thank y'all so much. I, I was thinking about the people outside of Louisiana looking at that piece and looking at all the different boats and saying, do those guys really need that many options in a boat? <laughs> but uh, that was really a great piece. And y'all, I want to introduce Tom Butler right here because Tom, there he goes, he's, he's, he's in charge of that wonderful boat museum in Lockport. And I want to thank you so much for being here with us. You want to say Uh, Sister Georgiane is sitting right next to you, and Sister, we're going to talk about squirrels in a minute. Right. Andrew Capone right next to him, and then, of course, Joan Boudreau, we're going to talk to you a little bit uh, more as well. My guest at the studio, huh? <laughs> but, you, you know, uh, today I'm cooking everybody's favorite dish, squirrel. Yeah. <laughs> well, what, what do you mean? I mean, I, uh, squirrel, squirrel, that's it, my uh, squirrel. Huh? <laughs> That's Cajun for squirrel, okay? <laughs> uh, but hey, uh, any, anyway, we're going we're gonna to start to fire this up in just a uh, The squirrel, you know, is uh, uh, oh, about October to first part of year. There's a couple of seasons for squirrel. I always tell everybody when hunting, contact wildlife and fisheries to make sure you're, you're hunting in the right season. Normally, I'll go out when it's wrong. And uh, then I got, anyway, look, uh, there's a little squirrel egg right here. And I'm, I'm making a jambalaya. Everybody knows what a jambalaya is. Jambalaya from, from the Europeans wanting to make the, uh, the paella, that wonderful rice dish. They created the jambon ham with a la, African word for rice, yaya, jambon a la yaya becomes jambalaya in Louisiana. And I want to just season up the, the, the squirrel very quickly. And Tom, while I'm doing this, and uh, since you're an expert on all of these, uh, these boats, did you see my beautiful, I have a gorgeous pirog, y'all, right there on the side of the wall. Did you see that right there, Tom? I've seen that's it. A, that's a beautiful piece right there. Uh, and, and that was the original boat when the explorers got here, right back in the 1600s? Right. They, they, they came in and the Indians had used a lot of uh, uh, dugouts. Right. But they didn't call them dugouts, and they right. didn't have them well made. Yeah, where does the word pirog come from? Really, it, came, it, it comes it's, uh, out of South America. Yeah? 
Mm. And that, that's where it originated. Yeah, well, a lot of the colonists coming here absolutely did come from South America. Yeah, uh, the Spanish, of course, right. came in, Spanish. a lot of the explorers, right. yeah. Now, now, what's going on at the Boat Museum now? Is it just preservation of our, uh, of our no, boats? No, we, we, uh, we're offering boat building classes, <laughs> ah. too. We have a young fellow right now building a, a Lafitte ship, a small right. one. Now, who's taking classes in boat building? Well, whoever wants to join up. All right, y'all, you got it. We, we <laughs> offer <laughs> class. Whoever wants a boat class, huh? Whoever wants a boat class, you got it. Put your hand up. Who wants, who wants to sign up? <laughs> we need all we can get. <laughs> all right. So we need the money. Oh, it <laughs> always goes back to money. Always right? goes back to money. <laughs> okay, y'all, the squirrel jambalaya, we started to saute the squirrel. You want to get it nice and brown because one thing about a jambalaya, the color comes from the caramelization of the meat. If you don't brown it enough, number one, it won't taste as good, and number two, you will never get the final color that you're gonna see in just a minute. Now, of course, for the seasonings. I want you to take a look at my platter here because I have all of this beautiful onions, uh, celery, bell pepper, garlic, all of the things we call the trinity in Louisiana, all these beautiful flavors, because they're in everything we cook. Look how gorgeous that is. It almost looks like Mardi Gras, right? So that's going to all go down into the pot as well. But squirrel is one of those premier hunting, I mean, camp dishes, right? But also home cooks. The, the only reason I slow it up is because it's so hard to clean. <laughs> <laughs> now, Sister Jardine, somebody told me you used to hunt. Here's a, here's a nun, y'all, cooking squirrel, uh, hunting squirrel with her father, right? Right. Tell me right. about that. Tell well, me about that. Um, after my brother left home for college, uh, yeah. my, I was the only one left, and my dad taught me to hunt squirrel. And it truly, so, uh, it was a special time with my dad. You so know? Let, me, let me figure this out. After your brother left, yeah, he, he was, allowed you to hunt. Yes. <laughs> hey, it was. You know, girls tend to talk a lot in the in the woods. <laughs> the squirrel, you know, the squirrel young. Yeah, well, you know. Uh, <laughs> did you ever shoot one? I did. I All right, <laughs> give her a hand, a nun <laughs> shooting a squirrel. <laughs> uh, we, we'll talk more privately about a nun with a gun right. in a minute, huh? I had and to I'll... hang it up when I entered the convent. <laughs> I had to hang it up. Oh, I thought it was the other way around. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, y'all, here I have the rice in, onion, celery, bell pepper, garlic, all in. I'm stir-frying the rice very quickly. Now into this, I have to put my stock. And normally for rice in a jambalaya, one and a half cups of stock for every cup of rice. Is that about right? Uh, absolutely. Now, we're a big rice state, right? We cook, we cook rice with just about everything. Huh? What about, you remember we were talking earlier? Hmm? Uh, <laughs> yeah, we cook rice on everything. We're not as much a potato society as we are rice. So, y'all, one and a half cups of rice per, uh, one, one cup of rice per one and a half cups of liquid. We're going to season this nicely with a little salt again, a little pepper. You know, no, 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 no uh, rules and regulations here. Just put it in. I'm going to have a little Worcestershire sauce going down in here for color. Oh, yeah. Who said ooh, huh? Vinegar. What about vinegar, huh? A little bit of vinegar in there. Yeah, we need it. Oh, yeah, got to have that. Okay, y'all, I'm going to put a lid on it. I'm going to turn it to low, and I'm going to let this cook. And I want y'all to take a look at this one. Oh, take a look at this pot here. I'm going to put a little parsley down in it. What do y'all think? Come on. What do you don't like this or what, huh? <laughs> uh, and, and, and look how the rice... Look how the rice is grain for grain. This isn't the, the Chinese or Asian rice. It's all grain for grain. So we're going to serve uh, folks a little bit of that in a minute. Now, I went down to St. Joe Plantation in Vashi, which is a beautiful place. And, uh, of, of course, I have Joan here. And Diane sitting right there helped me cook a beautiful squirrel recipe. Let's watch that. Oh. What a gorgeous day today at beautiful St. Joe Plantation. And I'm, I'm standing here with a, a good friend, somebody I actually went to school with many years ago, uh, uh, Diane Simon Chauvin, whose family has a great association with a St. Joe Plantation. Uh, Diane, thank you so much for being here with us today. You're now, now where, where exactly is St. Joe? If you were going to tell somebody this. St. Joe is located on Highway 18, 
in Vashery, and we're right next door to Oak Alley yeah, Plantation. Beautiful Oak Alley is right next door, and Felicity, another family home, is right Felicity, next door. Felicity, yes. So, so you're in the middle of two beautiful plantation homes. Right. Now, now what makes this home different is it's been in the same family for all, well over a hundred years yes, now. Yes, uh, the, the home is, is built in 1830. Right, and your family in, in 1877 picked it up. Now another thing that makes St. Joe different is that it is a working sugar plantation even today. How many acres are on the 2,500 sugar? acres. <laughs> now when we talk about great sugar plantations, 2,500 acres. Now your father was overseer, overseer. here for many years and he had a friend your babysitter, who was an African-American uh, man who was here for three generations at the plantation, and he used to do a dish that we wanted in his honor. Mm -hmm. Fred Lewis is Fred his name. Fred Lewis, yes. And Fred Lewis died just a couple of years ago. In December, yeah? yes. Yeah, uh, uh, and, but, but he was here, his family here, three generations. In fact, his, his original family may have actually been slaves on one of the sugar plantations. They weren't sure, yes. They, they weren't sure. Now, why don't we go ahead and throw Fred, we're gonna do a squirrel dish. Okay. Because Fred was a squirrel hunter, so I'm gonna go ahead and put a little salt in here a little granulated garlic, a little pepper. Now, of course, they, they were big hunters, so there was a lot of hunting going on in St. Joe, I'm sure, yes. right? Now, okay, we're gonna stir that around a little bit. Now, St. Joe, the plantation also does a lot of activities during the year. I know that there's, uh, that, that they do the uh, beautiful St. Joseph, Joseph Altar, Altar in, in March. March. What else do they do And here? in October, we have the morning tour. Um, Tell me a little bit about the morning tour. We have a coffin set up in the oh, hall. Oh, to show how the Creoles of the river. Right. And, and what would, so, so everything's in black because the mourning period, if somebody died, the widow would over a year or over so. Over a year just stayed dressed in black. Yeah, so, you, so the whole house, so that's unique probably because I don't know of many plantations that do a mourning tour that shows how the house would have gone into into morning. Well, what are some of that? What are some of the things they do? You say dress the mirrors in black. The uh, mirrors we have black on the mirrors. Coffin. You the say? coffin. Um, let's see. We have the pictures. Uh, all, all covered like as we, well. We have also like black dresses that ah, some of the the ladies used to ladies. wear. So y'all have a lot of the original things here too, because yes. the house was in the same family for so many we years. We have like brooches made out of uh, hair. Oh my God. Okay, look, so Diane, we have the squirrel that Fred Lewis uh, made. We're gonna put the onions in here because he just made a good onion gravy, mm -hmm. a little bit celery, a little bit bell pepper, and of course, this is typical Creole cooking of wild game. Just very simply smothered, a lot of garlic into it, some stock that's gonna go right down in, and then this would either stay on top of the stove to pot roast, as we call it, in this onion gravy, or it could go into an oven at about 350 degrees for an hour and a half. Mm -hmm. And you know what? This is what Fred Lewis would have served at St. Joe Plantation, or maybe his family for three generations, smothered squirrel and an onion gravy. Diane, thanks so much for sharing all those thoughts You're with welcome. us. You're huh? welcome. <laughs> That's really nice. Huh? Fred would be proud, I think. Yeah, huh? I'm sure he'd, <laughs> he'd like to taste it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what a great segment with uh, Diane. Thank you so much. And of course, we have Joan right here from uh, uh, from beautiful, uh, that gorgeous uh, St. Joe Plantation. Now, that has been in the same family for all of these years, right? Since 1877. 18, yes. and, and it's still a working sugar plantation. Yes, we still have family members running our sugar cane fields. Yeah, mm -hmm. and it's open just about every day of the year if people want to stop by? Uh, we're open for tours, yeah. um, guided tours. Um, Monday through Saturday, every, every. Now week. I was intrigued, y'all. They actually decorate the house in the in the fashion of mourning when there was a death in the old Creole days, and they had to cover all the mirrors. Right? Tell us quickly about that. Well, they covered the mirrors because they thought that the spirits were attracted to the mirrors and could get caught in the mirrors. Now remember, we have nuns here. <laughs> <laughs> remember, we have nuns all over the audience here today. Huh? Yeah. Huh? yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, just, not just the way it was. That's what they. That's well, y'all, it's a beautiful place. If you have not been to St. Joe Plantation, let me recommend that y'all go there. I love it. It's a great family, a family working hard, just as many other plantation families are. Uh, you know, just a little bit more about squirrel, and I know uh, Andrew. I want to talk to you about it, but the squirrel season, you know, is uh, 
Uh, there, there's some restrictions in it, but normally till about February the 8th, beginning of October, and it switches back and forth. There's a bag limit. There's a bag limit. We don't, you know, we try to honor it. Uh, it's eight. Yeah, it's eight. It ought to be by the pound, but it's by the number. So we, uh, so we, it's, it's, it's eight. And of course, one of the things somebody asked me a minute ago was about the vinegar I put in. And of course, that, uh, that vinegar uh, is kind of to take away the wild taste. But as I said, if God wanted to take away the wild taste, we would all be eating beef and pork every day. We need some of that. By the way, St. Joe in Vashree, Louisiana, y'all, that's about 70 miles west of New Orleans, right? So up 60 miles west of New Orleans, coming down the Mississippi River. So I think that's about close. You'll find it. Call me if you don't know how to get there. Okay, let's talk about my next uh, squirrel dish. Squirrel. Y'all with me? Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Squirrel. Come on. Let's go. Squirrel, huh? <laughs> All right, y'all, again, uh, Judy, I'm Judy seasoning, onion, mm-hmm. celery. Andrew, uh, you know, y'all, you know how Louisianians are raconteurs, storytellers. <laughs> the storytellers, or I should say the liars, <laughs> in Louisiana will not meet until Andrew gets there. <laughs> oh, <come huh>? on. <laughs> I'm just, like, he's a great historian and friend. Tell them that story you were telling me while I do this uh, about, uh, about the uh, squirrels getting killed and coming to you after their dad. Sounds like the St. Joe morning story. <laughs> anyway, go ahead. One Andrew. of the most fascinating stories about squirrel hunting I ever had was told to me by a guy by the name of Emile Julian. And Emile Julian was born in the 1880s. They always have an interesting name, and they always came early, 1800, the stores of Louisiana. Go ahead. He was born in the 1880s, and he said that he, he was, we would talk to him every night uh, when we were growing up in the 50s. They didn't have air conditioning, not much, at, at two TV stations. And so we would sit outside in front of Mr. Julian's sporting goods Andrew, store. this is only a 30-minute show. <laughs> I, this is only a 30-minute show. I have to cook, too, you know? Huh? All right, well, I'm, I'm getting that. <laughs> so anyway, he told this story one time. He said that he was hunting, and he said the squirrels, when he shoot, whenever he shot them, they would, the dead squirrel would come to him. And I said, that's impossible. <laughs> he said, yeah, he said it happened. He said, only one time in my life. I said, well, what happened? He said, well, he said, I was sitting on the side of a slough. It was after a rain. A slough is a little ditch, a little creek. Well, we, we know. And we so, know. anyway, <laughs> they had two oak trees yeah. that were crossing the creek. Yeah. And the squirrels were running back and forth. And as he shot them, <laughs> they would hit the water and then float right to him. And he put them right there. <laughs> True See what story. I mean? Uh, sisters. Uh, <laughs> sisters. All, all I can add, all I can add to that is. <laughs> okay, y'all, look, squir- look. I put ham on the bottom. I put ham on the bottom. I season my squirrels. Y'all, look at my little uh, dish here. I'm gonna throw some carrots on top of that. I'm gonna throw some onions on top of that. Y'all with me here? You see, I'm going fast, huh? You see, I'm gonna. Uh, you, you, you get the idea? All the vegetables are in also with the uh, the squirrel. It goes on the bottom. The squirrel's not brown. I'm going to put a little garlic in here. I'm going to put a little apple because this is a little apple cider going on there. We did grow apples in Louisiana. Two different trees grew well here. The onions, you see all of this nice flavoring? That's what makes Louisiana cooking so great. Now more of the squirrel right on top, all seasoned nicely with salt, pepper, granulated, a beautiful white meat, and it really, really cooks up quickly. Same thing again. I'd come across the top with all of these ones. Y'all with me? Oh, yeah, it's a good dish. No, oh yeah, now I'm going to come back. This is cooking the squirrel casserole in a minute and a half. Huh? <laughs> huh? <laughs> All right, now we have it right here. A little bit more salt. I'm going to put a little apple cider in here, but we also make our own liqueurs. We make the ratifias with the wild fruit and brandy. They made this at St. Joe. And we're going to put a little bit in that. That way if the squirrel or the casserole is bad, you don't care. <laughs> huh? Okay, now a little... A little bread crumbs on top of that. Let me run to the oven. This is going into the oven right here. Follow me, follow me. Here's this beautiful oven. Watch what happens. And this is really cooking in this oven too. That's why I'm using oven mitts. 
I want y'all to take a look at this right here. This is the casserole. It's all nice and brown, just beautifully right there. And you just scoop it up. You have the potatoes, the carrots, the apples. It's all right there. Thank y'all so much for being here. Judy, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate you. <laughs> Thanks for all of you as well for joining us in the swamps of Louisiana. And remember, man's love affair with hunting is not about the kill. Not about the skill. It's all about the fabulous feast after the hunt. Thank y'all for coming by. Okay? Thank you. To purchase the After the Hunt cookbook by Chef John Foles, an After the Hunt t-shirt or program DVD, call the number on your screen. Funding for After the Hunt with Chef John Fulce is brought to you by the Baton Rouge Area Convention and Visitors Bureau. Day is dawning on the Mississippi River and the sun is shining on Baton Rouge. Attractions, shopping, food, and southern hospitality you know and love. Go BR and go brighter. And the Foundation for Excellence in Louisiana Public Broadcasting. Our mission is to tell Louisiana's story to the world. and by the Louisiana Department of Culture, Recreation, and Tourism. Vacation planning guides are available at louisianatravel.com. You wait all year for your vacation. Don't sleep through it. <laughs>